Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Cravers and another video tutorial for the ROG Ally X, or basically any other PC handle running on Windows. Here I am playing Indiana Jones and the Great Circle on the ROG Ally X, switching between different TDP settings, trying to find the perfect balance between performance and battery life. Right now I'm running it in turbo mode, 30 watts plugged in, and I'm getting a pretty stable 35 to 36 frames per second. Not bad at all for a handheld like this, but here's the thing. It's kind of bulky. The process of tweaking settings, the background processes, and the pop-ups, Windows just isn't built with handheld gaming in mind. It works, but it doesn't feel like it's made for this form factor. Which is why today I'm going to show you how to install the official Steam OS not just on the Steam Deck, but right here on the ROG Ally or Ally X, and why, in my opinion, you probably should as well. Let's jump into it. First off, the only thing you need to have ready is a USB stick. Any brand or model you prefer, but I recommend using a high quality USB drive, preferably one with good read and write speeds. That's going to make things faster and smoother during the installation, and you'll see why exactly that matters a bit later in this video. I'm using a USB-A stick here, which works totally fine, but just keep in mind that the ROG Ally only has a USB-C port, so you need an USB-A to USB-C adapter if you're going that route. You can technically do this next part directly on your ROG Ally, but I strongly recommend using a regular computer if you have one. It's just faster and a bit more stable. Start by heading to the first link in the video description, that will take you to Valve's official SteamOS recovery and installation page. Scroll all the way down until you reach the section labeled ROG Ally and click on the link that says install SteamOS on your device. From there look under the section called re-image and install SteamOS and click the link that says download the recovery image. Check the little box to accept the terms and then hit the green download button to start downloading the image file. Next, click the second link in the video description, the one labeled Rufus, and download that application as well. We're going to use it to write the SteamOS recovery image onto the USB drive. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, you can use something like Balina Etcher instead, it does the same thing. But if you're on Windows, Rufus is by far the most straightforward and reliable tool for the job. Once you got your image file downloaded and Rufus ready to go, launch Rufus and plug your USB drive into your computer. It should show up automatically under Device, just make sure you're selecting your correct USB stick, especially if you have more than one plugged in. Then click the select button, locate your SteamOS recovery image and hit start to begin the flashing process. Now depending on the speed and quality of your USB drive, this step might take a while, so feel free to go grab a coffee, stretch a bit and just let Rufus do its thing. Oh and I forgot to mention, your USB drive will be completely formatted during this process, so make sure you've backed up anything important before you continue. Everything on it will be erased forever. Once Rufus is done, you can leave your computer behind and safely unplug the USB drive. Now make sure your ROG Ally X is completely powered off, and if your battery is low, go ahead and plug in the charger. This only applies to the Ally X since the original Ally only has one USB-C port and can't charge while using the USB drive. Insert the USB stick into your Ally and now we're going to enter BIOS. To do that, press and hold the volume up button and while still holding it, press the power button to turn your device on. When you hear the chime, you can let go of the power button but keep holding the volume up until you're greeted by a pop-up. From here, choose Enter Setup. And this will take you into the BIOS settings. From here, press Y on your ROG Ally to enter advanced mode. Next, tap the D-pad to the right to navigate over to the security tab. From there, scroll down to secure boot and then set secure boot control to disabled. And once that is done, you can press B to go back to the main BIOS screen, then use the right arrow to move over to the save and exit tab. Choose to save your settings and exit and your ROG Ally should now reboot automatically. Now if you, like me, are suddenly hit with this super annoying BitLocker recovery blue screen, don't panic. Unfortunately this means we need to take a quick step back without going too deep into what BitLocker actually is. The short version is Windows has locked the drive for security reasons. To get past this you'll need to boot back into Windows and unlock it from there. Once that's done we can jump right back into the SteamOS installation process. 
Now if you're lucky and don't get the blue screen, you'll see a pop-up asking which boot method to use, just select your USB stick and move on. But if your ally boots straight into Windows instead, you'll need to restart and once again hold volume up and power to get back to that boot menu. Either way, feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter, the rest of us are dealing with BitLocker first. And there's actually two ways to disable BitLocker. The first and more obvious method is to go into the control panel, navigate to BitLocker Drive Encryption, select your system drive and click Turn Off BitLocker. But I'm going to show you the longer way, because it's more reliable and tends to work better on handles like the Ally. Start by clicking the magnifying glass and search for PowerShell. Right click it and choose Run as Administrator. Once it opens, type in manage minus BDE space minus status. This will show you the current encryption status for all your drives. Find your system drive, usually labeled with the letter C, and check that it says protection on. That's BitLocker doing its thing. Now to turn it off, type this command. Disable minus BitLocker space minus mount point quote C colon quote. Of course, replace C with whatever your system driver letter is, if it's different. So as you can see on the right side of the PowerShell window, protection is now listed as off. But to fully remove BitLocker and decrypt the drive, there's one final command you need to run. So type in manage minus BDE space minus off space C colon, or replace C with your actual drive letter if it's different, and then hit enter. This will begin the decryption process, and once that is done, BitLocker will be fully disabled. Now that BitLocker is finally out of the way, it's time to pick things up where we left off earlier in this video. That means heading back into the BIOS and making sure secure boot control is disabled, just like we did before. Once that is done, plug in your USB drive with SteamOS one last time, then press and hold volume up and power at the same time to access the boot options menu. Oh, and by the way, if you noticed the USB stick looks different than before, that's because mine actually stopped working while I was recording this video. So yeah, I had to switch to another one mid-shoot. It happens. Anyway, this time you should see your USB stick listed as one of the boot options, and if you see two entries labeled Partition 1 and Partition 2, make sure you select Partition 1, that's the one you want to boot from. As soon as you choose to boot from the USB stick, you'll see a wall of text start scrolling by, including a Welcome to Steam OS message. Depending on how fast your USB drive is, this part can take anywhere from 20 seconds to several minutes. Now, if you see anything in red saying fail to launch or something similar, that usually means your USB stick is faulty, just like what happened to me. In that case, you'll need to try again with a different drive. But if everything works as it should, you should eventually land in the SteamOS desktop environment, and here you will be presented with four options, and we are going to choose the one on the right. That's the option that completely wipes your internal drive and installs SteamOS from scratch. So yes, this is the point of no return. Once you hit install, there's no undo. Make absolutely sure you're ready to say goodbye to Windows. And once you confirm the install, SteamOS will begin installing for real. No returning back now. You can sit back and relax for a few minutes while it does its thing. The installer will handle everything automatically. And once that is done and you're fully booted into SteamOS, I'll walk you through a few things you'll pretty much want to do right away to get the best experience. Once you reach this familiar Steam login screen, just sign in with your regular Steam credentials, or if you prefer, use the QR code with the Steam mobile app to log in quickly and securely. And just like that, our Rogue Ally X is now running an official installation of SteamOS. But now comes the important part. Things you need to know. SteamOS still lacks a lot of official drivers and deeper support for devices that aren't Steam Decks. Some controls might not work right away and features like RGB rings around the joysticks won't function out of the box. But don't worry, there are ways to fix most of that. The first thing we're going to do is to download the latest beta version of SteamOS, and trust me, it's way easier than it sounds. Simply tap the menu button down in the bottom left corner and then go into settings and head over to the system tab. Scroll down a bit until you find beta participation and change your system update channel from stable to beta. Once you do that a pop-up will appear, just tap on restart now and apply the change. After your device has rebooted go back into the same system settings menu and download the latest beta update. 
This version includes important fixes and better support for non-Steam Deck hardware like the ROG Ally. And once the beta update has finished downloading, go ahead and restart your device again to install it. And after rebooting, you'll likely notice that several issues have already been resolved. Things like missing controls and other weird bugs should now be fixed thanks to the beta update. And that's really all you need to do to get SteamOS up and running on your ROG Ally. But as a bonus, I want to give you a few extra tips. Essential plugins that will seriously improve your experience, at least until Valve eventually releases full SteamOS support for non-Steam Deck hardware. The first thing you should do from desktop mode on your ROG Ally is to head over to Decky Loader's website. Click the download button and install it right away. Decky Loader is an add-on or plugin loader for SteamOS and it lets you install and use small tools that enhance or tweak your system in really useful ways. Once it's installed, you can access it by opening the quick access menu on your ROG Ally and scroll all the way down to the icon that looks like a wall plug. From there, you'll be able to browse and install some of my favorite plugins simply by tapping the house icon at the top. And the first one you should download is called Simple Decky TDP. This one allows you to tweak your TDP settings far beyond what SteamOS lets you do by default. As you probably know, the ROG Ally can run up to 30 watts TDP, but SteamOS out of the box only lets you go up to 15. With Simple Decky TDP installed, you get full control over power settings just like you would in Windows. The next plugin you should grab is HueSync. This one lets you take control over the RGB rings around your joysticks, which by default turns off completely once you install SteamOS. Now maybe some of you don't really care about RGB lightning, but personally I think it's fun to be able to customize it and bring a bit of flair back to the device. The third plugin I want to recommend is CSS Loader. It's basically a themes manager or a visual customizer if you want. With CSS Loader you can tweak everything from rounded corners on box art to interactive backgrounds and even control how much of the screen is used for displaying artwork versus game text. It's the perfect plugin for anyone who wants to dial in their own personal look and feel. In short, if you like making your setup your own, this is a must have. And the last tip for today is to download the Steam Grid DB plugin. This one lets you customize the box art for your games, down to the exact look you want. It's especially useful for non-Steam games like Tony Hawk in my case, which I have added from the Epic Launcher. By default, those games don't come with any artwork at all. But with Steam Grid DB, I can make it look clean, cohesive and honestly just beautiful. But in the end, why did I install SteamOS on my Windows handle and why do I think that you should too? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Windows has always been an operating system built for a mouse and keyboard. Microsoft has tried over and over to tweak the experience for tablets and handhelds, but let's be honest, it's never felt truly optimized. SteamOS on the other hand is built from the ground and up to be controlled on a handheld like this, and it shows. But it's not just about usability, across the board I've actually experienced better performance in every single game I've tested. Take Indiana Jones for example, on Windows I was averaging around 34 to 35 frames per second, with the same settings and same TDP, but with SteamOS that jumps to over 40 FPS consistently. And keep in mind this is still an early build of SteamOS for non-Steam Deck devices. Official drivers for the ROG Ally aren't even fully in place yet. Which means it's only going to get better, more stable and more powerful from here. But yeah, like I said earlier, SteamOS is built for gaming while Windows still feels more like a desktop OS that's trying to adapt. With SteamOS your handle boots right straight into gaming, no desktop clutter, no background Windows updates randomly restarting your system, no antivirus pop-ups mid-game, everything is designed to keep you in the console-like experience. Just pick up, power on and play. It turns your Windows handle into something that feels a lot more like a true gaming console. And for me, that's a huge win. So there you have it, SteamOS on the ROG Ally, running smooth, looking clean and only getting better with time. If you found this video helpful, drop a like and if you already made the switch or you're thinking about it, let me know in the comments how it's going for you. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to Tech Cravers if you want more handled guides, tweaks and honest takes in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy gaming!